There's no difference to the consumer between clean electricity and dirty electricity. When you turn on the lights at home and you think that it's green power, the light doesn't look green. Under our current system, coal is subsidized. Under our current system, coal has an advantage. So your electric utility is going to buy coal instead of buying wind and solar. Members of the coalition are hoping to bridge the partisan divide in the name of energy reform. But in a country divided by politics, any attempt at conciliation will be an uphill battle. At the beginning of 1993, before I got to the Federal Communications Commission, my high school classmate Al Gore asked me if I would chair a committee that designed a carbon tax. You see, he's always cared about climate change and the information revolution, those two things. So I did do that. And we did design a carbon tax. It was called a British Thermal Unit Tax. And it was passed by the House of Representatives. And it was not passed by the US Senate. Years and years and years passed. And then when President Obama was elected, everybody said, well, let's take another crack at that, but let's call it cap and trade. At the dawn of Obama's presidency in 2009, environmentalists across the nation eagerly anticipated a breakthrough for cap and trade legislation. A cap-and-trade program would have issued permits for greenhouse gas emissions, over time lowering the amount of emissions allowed, and encouraging individual businesses to buy and sell permits from one another according to the demand. The Waxman-Markey Bill, written to facilitate the cap-and-trade program, was passed by the House in June 2009. The bill never made it out of the Senate. What happened in the last Congress was there were bills proposed to really set up a cap and trade system to deal with climate change. And essentially what that means is that people were trying to raise the cost of carbon. Early on, the uh, Republicans on our committee said, we will vote no on everything. We, we, will, we cannot deal with you. And that was a decision that their leader, Joe Barton, made and said, there will be we cannot vote for this bill. It was unfortunate, frankly, because some members on the Republican had very good ideas about renewable energy issues. Many of them had actually supported renewable energy standards in the past. But because their leadership saw it as part of a cap and tax proposal, they were essentially barred from working with us. The 2010 midterm elections confirmed what many had already surmised, that a price on carbon was not politically feasible in the near future of Congress. I remain convinced that comprehensive legislation, that cap and trade coupled with renewable energy is the way to go. Um, you know, the, the economist in me and the policy wonk in me sort of tells me that that's the way to go. The system isn't ready to accept that. So you can either frankly, stay in bed and not do anything, or try to adapt to the circumstances and try to do what you can. There's a couple things that Republicans and Democrats have generally agreed on, even when they're fighting about pretty much everything else. One thing that they generally agree on is that private sector capitalism is where almost all the money comes from to build our economy and change our society. This is another way to really have the private sector lead us towards a clean energy because there's not enough government dollars to build this. Let the private investors take the chances seeking profits that collectively will make our whole economy a clean and green one. My first job out of business school was in the solar energy industry. And I was really excited about solar when I was a kid. And I sort of kept that. Enfranchising people to take control of their energy future has a bigger impact than we realize. A bigger impact for those people than they realize until they really get into it. Having developed what they hope will be an exciting, bipartisan approach to energy reform, now comes the tricky part, convincing the country and Congress to care. There's a big debate about whether a clean energy economy 
uh, is too expensive, uh, whether it will cost American jobs, whether it will lead to com companies fleeing the United States. I think that argument is exactly backwards. I think that if we can create a clean energy economy, we're building the industry of the future. If we don't do it, we're leaving behind the industry of the future. The energy business is the largest infrastructure business in the world. You can't be a strong country if you depend for your energy supplies on somebody else. And you can't be a strong country if you've got a backward energy system uh, compared to the rest of the world. This is a remarkable, uh, stunning statistic. Um, the word China appeared 20 times more frequently than the word Afghanistan in political ads in 2010. China had just announced a very, very ambitious multi-year plan to develop their clean energy industry. I think they're talking about $740 billion in spending um, on the economy. In our stimulus package, we were 80 or 90 billion, and that's sort of where we're stopping.